Hi there, everyone. My name is Purak Jitani. I'm an MD MBA. I am a first year intern at Stanford's internal medicine program. And today I want to talk to you about five skills that I wish I had learned in medical school and I think would be helpful for anyone trying to go into medicine. And these are skills that I'm currently working on as an intern. So the earlier you start, the better I think you'll be because I'm still working on these things and I wish I had learned them earlier. So the first one is actually, I wish I had learned to never stop learning. And I'm actually slowly getting really good at this. So this is actually one of the skills that I'm better at. Uh, but I wish um, I had kind of gotten into it earlier than I did. I think I only started getting into this in medical school. And had I kind of done it in undergrad, it would have been a bit easier because medicine is a field where you're going to be learning all the time. The hospital is a very scary place. Very rarely will you always know the right answer. But the interesting part is when you put a bunch of residents together, the group think is insanely synergistic. So there's no question that a group of me and my residents can't figure out together. But there are tons of questions that I would not be able to figure out on my own. And the good part about having this mindset about learning to never stop learning is that whenever I don't know something, I'm never surprised because all I say is like, wow, that was like really impressive. And next time this happens, I'm going to just tuck this in the back of my head and hope I can remember. But even if I can't, I know that there's always a team there to help me um, ensure that patients get good care. But just remember to learn to never stop learning because if you think that at, there is a light at the end of the tunnel, eventually you're gonna know everything or one day you're gonna be that amazing surgeon who knows how to address every single situation or one day you're gonna be that incredible internist who knows how to work up a patient A to Z without any sort of help whatsoever, that's not true. There's Things are changing day to day, papers are coming out, practices are changing and whatever you think may, you may know and you do know now, just remember that down the road, there's still going to be a lot you don't know, even if you are 40 years in, um, in practice. Okay. And the more you accept that, the better I think you'll be because you'll be more likely to ask questions. So that actually then brings me to my second point, which is to get comfortable being uncomfortable. Uh, this is something I still struggle with to this day and I wish I didn't, but unfortunately I still do in the hospital. A lot of people are sick and probabilistically many of those sick people will likely get more sick in the hospital before they get better. And sometimes that is a saying we have, which is sometimes you have to get worse before you get better. Because for example, if you have an infection, you might spike a huge fever. And part of that is the inflammatory response that your body is having to get rid of the infection. So you get a bit worse before you end up getting better. So in the hospital right now, I was really uncomfortable when I started. And I got really kind of annoyed because that uncomfortable feeling was not going away despite me being in the hospital for more and more time. I thought I would get more familiar with it. And the reason why that uncomfortable feeling wasn't going away is because there's no two patients that are identical. You may see a GI bleed one time and you may know how to address it the second time, but the second time it happens, it may be an entirely different patient and thus you work it up entirely differently. So all that to say, I have now realized like part of the name is getting comfortable being uncomfortable. The fact that you, the fact that I feel uncomfortable when I walk into work sometimes is actually sometimes a good sign for me because it tells me I really am a little bit worried about this patient. And because I am worried about this patient, I should reach out and make sure I know what to do what, when things go awry. And if I know what to do, then I can be a little bit more reassured that at least if things hit the fan and I am uncomfortable at that point, I know what to do at that, at that like period, right? Feeling uncomfortable is normal and something that means that you are not only taking everything seriously, but also that you are rightfully advocating for the patient. Like if this was my mom, of course, I'm going to be worried if she's sick, right? And all of these people are sick. So for you to be uncomfortable, I think that's a pretty natural response. Um, but if you get comfortable being uncomfortable, that's the best that's the best approach because then you're like not phased. You're like slightly, slightly uneasy, but you're not phased by that uneasy feeling, which is a very different perspective to have. The third one that was going to be an essential skill for anyone in healthcare is to never, ever, 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 ever worry alone ever. So let's say there's a patient and a lot of people think the patient's doing well. 
but you think the patient isn't doing as well and whatever for whatever reason. Maybe they had a three-point drop in hemoglobin and you think that maybe they're bleeding or maybe the patient has not an official fever, but they're at 100 and they usually run pretty low, so maybe they do have a fever. Even if you have those thoughts, never keep them to yourself. Even if everyone else thinks the patient is okay, it's always good to say, hey, did you see this three-point drop in hemoglobin? That's weird. We should keep an eye on that. Or did you see this patient's temperature? Like, it seems like it's going upward. Maybe we should measure it a bit more frequently. And by voicing your thoughts and by saying something that you're worried about, you are at least advocating and putting into that group think what I was just talking to you earlier. You will never know the answer on your own, but by putting out your worries, you're exposing them to a larger group of people such that if something were to happen, more people are aware of the situation and thus we can reach a solution faster. The more eyes that are on a problem, the better they are. And even if your um, intuition is unfounded, like let's say they had a three point drop in hemoglobin and you think they're bleeding and they end up not having a bleed, well, who who cares, right? Like you just, uh, then they're, the patient's doing well. And you just said a statement that didn't end up being true and the patient's better off, so great. But in the small percent chance that that statement was true and the patient did have a massive GI bleed, at least you voiced it and people are aware and we know what to do if that happens, right? So that's the third, third tip. The fourth one, and this is a little bit more close to my heart because I say I don't know all the time and sometimes I feel kind of stupid about it. Actually, a lot of time I do. Um, but for me, I just realized like I don't know is kind of like a bad word in medicine. It's like, oh, doctors are supposed to know everything and it seems like everyone I'm surrounded by is just so smart and intelligent that sometimes they just know everything. And I feel that way, even as an intern. Um, and so sometimes it's tough for me to say I don't know because I'm like, should I know this? And even if I should know this, I feel kind of crappy that I don't know this. So I don't want to say I don't know. So it can be scary to say you don't know. But I, I genuinely think that when I say I don't know, or even if I put out a hypothesis, like here's what I think, this probably may not be correct. Let me know if that's not. At least I'm acknowledging what I don't know and I can be taught by someone who does. And more importantly, I think we need to open up more of a culture of vulnerability in healthcare. Like we're all humans too, right? When we're taking care of people, we're not supposed to know everything. It's a very tough field. And so by acknowledging that is the first step to kind of rectifying the feel that you're supposed to be able to figure everything out because that's not the case. Um, you're supposed to be able to know how to work everything up and you're supposed to make sure the patient gets great care, but it doesn't mean that you have to know exactly what to do at the every next step. Otherwise, we wouldn't have hospitals. We would just have single doctors. Hospitals are there because we have a network of people who can come together to help fill in gaps when other people have gaps, right? That's the whole point. So admit you don't know if you don't know something, maybe put in a hypothesis like, oh, you know, maybe this is why this is happening, but I'm not positive. And then someone can teach you. And then that way you can actually learn. And next time that happens, you're going to be aware of it, right? So I don't know. I don't think those are bad words. Some people in the hospital might. I just think it's important to acknowledge our limitations. And lastly, ask for feedback and set expectations. This is true for anyone in healthcare. What I mean by this is whenever I start a rotation with an attending, I say, hey, here's, what I'm, here's my name, here's where I'm from, here's what I'm excited about, here are my weak points, here are things that I'm hoping to learn, I've heard you're really good at this, I'd love to learn this from you. And then halfway through the rotation, or even at the end of the rotation, I say, hey, what do you think I can improve, what do you think I did well? And by doing that with someone who knows more than you or maybe is in a p place that you can learn from, you can actually say like, hey, I wanna be like you when I grow up. What do you think? What do I need to improve on? And by asking for feedback and setting expectations, that's, that's actually where, how a lot of learning is done in hospitals. There's very little learning in hospital that's done like, hey, let's sit down and talk about this. A lot of learning is actually done like, hey, I really liked the way you did that. Like that patient was really unstable and you stabilized them really fast. How did you do that? What did you do? And by asking for feedback and setting expectations, you can take the first step and making sure you're optimizing your learning, okay? So I hope this was helpful for everyone. I know it's certainly helpful for me because it makes me think about the things that I'm learning and I wish I could do better, and um, I hope it helps you. So if it does help you, please drop a like, comment, share, subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next one. Thank you so much for watching. Peace.